In this screencast I'm going to show you a few common issues that you may have when designing a board in Eagle and how to sort these things out. So the first thing to have a look at here is to be really clear on the color scheme that we're looking at. So top layer in red and the bottom layer in blue. So when we're talking about boards which are manufactured on a milling machine uh, that do not have through-hole plating, then you have to be very, very conscious on uh, about which side of the board you are actually soldering to and therefore which side you can run your tracks from. So in the case of this first example board that we're looking at here, the header on the left-hand side, this one here that connects to our dev boards, is actually soldered upside down. So the solder will be on the top layer of the board, which means that all of our tracks, as shown here in red, need to come from the top in that case so that they line up with where we're actually physically going to be soldering to. Then when we come across to the integrated circuit, for example here, integrated circuit will be soldered on the bottom of the board and therefore we need to connect our tracks in the blue layer on the bottom here so that we can physically solder to that. Now if you're using a manufacturing technique with through-hole plating then of course this doesn't matter. You can run your tracks from either side of the board but for this subject you need to produce your designs as if they were being manufactured on the milling machine because they may very well actually um, be produced there. So you need to consider these things in your design. So in this case, starting from uh, the top layer, going through a via to the bottom layer where we join to the integrated circuit. So having a look at this board, uh, there's immediately a problem that we can notice here, and, and that is this particular pin. So in this example here, uh, this pin is routed from the top layer, and of course we're soldering this on the other side. So the way that we fix that is delete this track, rip that up, and route a new track starting from the bottom. I'll change the track width here to be one millimeter. Come out. If you want to uh, change layers of a track wall, you're routing it, you just click, go across. I'm not pressing the mouse button, I'm just dragging across here to the top layer and go across onto this surface mount component. And when I click, then automatically it creates a via here for me to join uh, those top and bottom layers. Now these surface mount components are going to be placed on the top of the board which is why we need to run our tracks from there. Now after you have finished producing your layout one of the best things to do is to run what's called a design rule check. So under the tools menu here this DRC stands for design rule check and there's actually a, a preset configuration that you can download from LearnJCU which has the settings for uh, what we can produce here um, on the milling machine if you, you download that file and press the load button here and browse to it. So after you've set that up you press check and you'll probably find that you have some DRC errors that appear. And so let's have a look at some of these. So the first um, error here we see here is clearance and it highlights whereabouts this happens on the board. And Basically what it's telling us here is that these two tracks are simply too close together and, and there's not enough clearance from one to the other. And so we can fix that pretty easily by separating one from the other. Now the design rule check uh, is not going to be recalculated until we go over to DRC and press check again. So we do that and we notice that now we have a different, uh, those errors have been removed and we'll move on to the, the next ones. So this error here, stop mask. What it's talking about here is that there's this uh, gray line which is part of this footprint showing you the edge that runs over the top of the track. And so this is related to this particular footprint. It's not something that you have done um, with, with routing the board and so that's actually okay. So that's we can ignore this particular error. So the design rule check is not a perfect thing. If, if the error is occurring due to something on a footprint then it's probably okay unless there really is a problem with the footprint. So we can neglect all of those errors but see here the final one is highlighting an issue down here. Now what's going on here it's probably that this particular text here, this JP1, which appears mirrored because it's being put on the other side of the board, this text is, uh, is too close to the pad here, not enough clearance there. Now in practice with the milling machine that really wouldn't be a problem because the silkscreen layer is completely ignored anyway, but let's just go ahead and show you how uh, you would actually resolve this particular error. 
So in order to be able to move this bit of text here, the first thing that you need to do is have uh, uh, set the properties of the component to allow that. So that's already been set in this example, but just to show you how that works, I grabbed the information tool here, clicked on that component, and there's this tick box here that says smashed. And so when that smashed box is ticked, then the labels such as this JP1 are independent components and they can be moved and deleted and rotated independently. So I'll move that down a little bit, just get it out of the way. Close off DRC, go back, run it again. And we notice that that error has gone away and the only issues remaining are those to do with this particular footprint here, which we don't have to worry about. So now, um, we're getting happy with this board, so I have already drawn the polygons on both layers around the outside here. If I click on Rat's Nest, then those polygons will get filled in, as you can see. Now what it's important to do at this step is make sure that our ground planes are properly connected, and this is something that Eagle's tools will not help you with, because it will assume through-hole plating, and we have to design boards which are compatible with uh, non through hole plated designs. So the way to check this yourself is to have a look at each layer individually. And I like to follow the path of the ground uh, connection as it comes from the power supply. So looking here at the top layer, remember this is where we're soldering our header. Okay, the ground are these little pins here. That's coming from the freedom board, from the power supply that's running in through the freedom board. Here's the ground, and we look at our polygon, and we see that it runs pretty much everywhere through this board. So through underneath the integrated circuit, through those pads into here, all the way around. So there are no islands, there's no gaps here where that uh, ground plane is actually not connected to. That's the top layer. By the way, uh, having a look at this integrated circuit here, even though it has drawn these connections through here, these pins are not going to actually be attached at the top layer because we're soldering on the bottom. So in the case of through-hole plating, they would be, but if it's made on a milling machine, they won't be. Let's now have a look at the bottom layer. We see here on the bottom layer that here is a via that connects the top and bottom ground plane, so that will be where the ground connection is coming from. There's another via down here. And so from each of those we see we reach all of this region, we reach the grounds for all of the LEDs. We can get in here, everywhere, but here we have a problem. So in this part of the design, you notice here that the ground that connects this integrated circuit here in this region is actually completely isolated. So this is what we call an island, completely disconnected from uh, the rest of the device. And so the fix for this is we need to put a via here and connect this piece of copper with the ground plane on the top side of the board. So to do that, turn the top layer back on so that you don't accidentally punch through a track that is uh, on the top layer. Grab the via tool and click somewhere in here then grab the name tool, click on the via, and name it as ground. Now we had one further uh, issue which you may have noticed on the bottom layer. We have another island in this little region here, and we have another island in this region that you can see here. So to fix up these, we have to do the same procedure. We grab our via tool, we find somewhere where we can put this here and here. We grab the name tool, ground, ground, clicks rat's nest to update um, our polygon pause. And now let's have a look at that. Again, on the bottom layer, we see this island is now connected through the via. This island is connected through the via, and so is this one. And so now the design that you can see here would be able to be manufactured successfully uh, on a process that does not implement through-hole plating. Now, of course, if you're having this commercially made and you do have through-hole plating, then these vias here would be unnecessary because they would come from the top layer anyway. And that's why it was not an error 
um, in the rule checking that Eagle was doing because it was assuming that technology. But it's important to be aware um, of these issues so that you can design your boards according to the process that will be used to manufacture them. So finishing up, we'll do one final check now that we have the polygons and we just see the same errors as before. And so everything looks good with this board and now we could send this off for manufacturing.